8 a.m. in the morning. Tomorrow morning. Everyone say tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. At 8 o'clock begins our prayer breakfast, starting with intercessory prayer at 8 o'clock. Uh, from 8 o'clock to 8.20 will be our intercessory prayer. You don't want to miss tomorrow morning. We're going to start the day off talking to the Lord and telling him about these situations, these conditions and the problems, and God is going to do it for us in the morning. If you have not secured a ticket for uh, the breakfast in the morning, you did not register, we only have 11 tickets left. We only have 11 tickets left, and you may go to the registration table and purchase a ticket for that breakfast on tomorrow. And we're going to have a high expectancy of what the Lord is going to do. I have a pair of lost keys. If you do not have your keys, uh, please see me. Someone lost their car keys. Amen. Amen. And the mimes have uh, uh, tapes available. They have videotapes available, and you may purchase those tapes in the lobby. Amen. And tomorrow, at, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, we want you to come back here. We're going to have prayer, I believe, at 930 or right, we're going right to the service at 10 o'clock. Elder Hinton will be with us again. He's here on tonight. Let's say amen for him. Amen. amen. He is here on tonight, and he's going to minister to us in the morning. And you don't want to miss this after tonight, I'm sure. Matter of fact, I guarantee you, I promise you that you won't be disappointed. He is a preaching machine. Amen. And he's going to be back with us in our 10 o'clock service, and he's going to bring us the bread of life. So tonight, I just want you to get involved in the service, and you're going to hear for yourself and hear what thus saith the Lord, and I'm sure you'll meet us at the 10 o'clock service in the morning. Please govern yourselves following these announcements and according to these announcements. Thank you. Let us say amen. Now, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Bishop James. He needs no introduction. And so I'm not going to waste time giving you a long introduction because he is known to all of us. Wait a minute, I, did I say the right thing? Amen. I just want to recall one important thing. I was reminded as I was thinking about what I might say to introduce Bishop. And the thing that crossed my mind was an event that happened for me on July 17, 1963. Bishop William James, who was Elder James at the time, was singing one of those songs that nobody knew but him, but he was teaching us in Fremont, Ohio. And there was a young boy of the age of 14 who went to Fremont only to sing in the choir, but who met the Lord in the midst of the singing of that song. And the Lord came into his life and saved him. And he's been saved ever since. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so not only was he one that I admired and wanted to be like in many respects, but he then became my spiritual father. And here I am with the privilege to introduce him to you tonight. I'm going to ask you if you'll just stand on your feet and receive Bishop William Morgan James with uplifted hands and the song, Hallelujah!
the dots and all the way from Indiana. There's so many of you here who haven't got time to get all of it. Thank God for you. Dr. Simmons is with us. Amen. Amen. He's, he's on the trying to come, but I didn't look for him. Bishop Roger Jones from Flint, Michigan. Amen. Glad to have him. And tonight, we're looking for God to do something here in this place. We're glad to have How many got hands? You could have some no's. In fact, you could have not have anything. We're glad to talk to him. Praise the Lord. And his lovely wife and little daughter, Sister uh, Miss. Where did she go? Oh, she's gone. She's, she's very busy, you know. She's get an appointment to see her. Glad to have her tonight. I'm not going to spend time talking about Dr. Hinton's achievements. You know him. Not a stranger. He has toured this country and preached the gospel over 40 years. He's the founder and the pastor of the great church, the monument of faith church that has the outreach ministry that brings in souls by the hundreds. This man's sole purpose is to reach souls reach the downtrodden and those that are thrown away, ignored and looked down upon. He's found the key. The gospel is the key. It can unlock any door and can meet any problem and solve anything that might seem impossible. Tonight we're glad. On tomorrow night, let me strongly urge you to be here. Our presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ worldwide will be here to speak. The Honorable Bishop Chandler D. David Owen will be here tomorrow night. Don't you miss it. If you miss it, you will regret it the rest of your day. Don't leave here with a regret that will hang on your head, head the rest of your day. Bishop Chandler David Owens will be here on tomorrow night. Also, I believe Elder Page will be speaking at the, uh, the prayer breakfast, is that right? On tomorrow. He's not here, but he'll be here. Well, listen, we just get started. If you got any corn, get them off. Any bunions, cut them off. Any rusty heels, some soap off or something. We intend to see this thing through, and we will not take no for an answer. Thank you, choir, sister Baltimore. The future is that is in this group up here. Not in me, not in you, is in this group here. If we lose this group, forget it. Keep them here at all costs. You say, well, they're not perfect, are you? We had perfect folks we could.
couldn't live with you anyway. You'd be so self-righteous we couldn't deal with you. Because we can't, we can't deal with you with the hypocritical self. So you know, if you was perfect, young folks, this is your day. Get all you can of God. I mean, get all you can in a time like this. We enjoyed those twins, didn't we? Shirley Jackson, God bless her. <laughs> Had a heart attack or whatever it was. And the folk were just trembling, but the Lord said, live on. <laughs> Won't you sit in prayer as this man of God comes to us? But the is a strange man. He's a machine. I don't know who was it, but he can talk about anything. Years ago, I thought maybe Bishop Cleveland was, could say everything, but I found out, no, he didn't know it all either. But the hymn comes very close to it. And we're glad to have him. Won't you receive him tonight and give him a lot of rain welcome. Won't you just stand up on your feet and say, God bless you, Dr. Hinton. We are glad for you. such a beautiful spirit that's in here on tonight. Then we give honor to this great man of God that has pushed beyond the norm of not just being a bishop, but doing what the scripture has said in the 50th Psalm. Gather my saints together, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. We don't do this often, but in case you want to stay all night in the parking lot, leave your car lights on. It's a blue car. License number R U A five eight nine Lucas County. A Ford at that. A Ford Temple in the parking lot. If you're there, if you if it sounds like your car, I would advise you to yes. take no chance because when I leave here, I leave. Yeah, thank you. God. <laughs> Amen. I know all about that. Yes. The scripture in the 50th Psalm says, Gather my saints together. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, pay your vows, and then call on me in the day of trouble. And I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glory find me. We're happy for this great gathering together. My people can go beyond the norm and just come together. And you know when you come here to latter rain, you're going to get something from the Lord. Not a lot of preliminary and who shot John, but just worship, praise, and letting the hallelujahs roll. Letting God have his way. When you walk away from these services, you know you've been to church. And that you have been with God. Because certainly in times like these, if ever we needed God to do something in us, to us, with us, and for us, it's now. Yes. And there's a sweet spirit in this place. And I'm grateful to God. And my soul doth burn within me because I feel Jesus in this place. I just look and see how wonderful the Lord is. Sometimes preachers wouldn't go and preach if just two or three folk are there. 
They will tell you in a minute, I don't preach to seeds because seeds don't believe in me. But Jesus turned around and said, well, that's all right. You can stay. If there's two or three gathered together in my name, I'll go and I'll be there in the midst of them. So I'm glad I feel Jesus in this place. I find that the old I get, I find myself unconsciously picking up the spirit of people. You know, I used to, you know, like some of y'all, look what they wore and if the heels and toes were in, if the dress was yay long, you know what I mean, and, and all like that. But then I found out that, <laughs> amen, there's a lot of spirits behind everything you wear. But I found myself studying the spirit of people unconsciously, not trying to read them, but just automatically. You know, something like your mother did. You see, years ago, your mother didn't ask you where you've been. She told you where you've been. Yeah. The mothers of yesteryear could look at that baby and say, honey, this is going to be a problem, child. Uh, and turn around and look at that baby and say, listen, this is a gifted child. They're going to be used of God. Say, God is going to begin to deal with them. Your mother, you don't mind me talking about your mama. Your mother could tell you whose baby it was. Of course, it's a little different now. The mothers of today say, well, I got to wait till she gets some size. But I'm glad, hallelujah, that I find that as you study the spirit of people, as you study the spirit of people, and, and I found that as the Lord would gift my ministry, you don't go by the outward of it. Sometimes you think those that stuff the stuff with water, or oh, deep, and you think it's deep for just drowning, you know? Yeah, yeah. But then I find, I find that God deals with man's spirit. He deals with man's spirit. And I feel Jesus, what about you? And isn't this amazing? No matter what has now in this room has been more than latter rain. I'm sure they've had everything in this convention center. But it does not affect what's going on now. And I'm sure whatever has gone on prior to this down through the years included some demons and devils. But they're not in here tonight. Glory. It's amazing. I want you to just join hands with the one next to you. In fact, make a bridge across the aisle. You won't catch nothing. I feel Jesus in this place. Amen. Join in with me. I'm not a gospel singer, so you're going to have to. You that know it. How many know it? I feel Jesus. I feel delivered in the present you've delivered 
And in the future, as we have trusted you, shall deliver. We thank you for these people that have come from far and near. To some, some have made a supreme sacrifice to be here for this period. And knowing you as I do, you're not going to let our coming be in vain. We look to thee because you know what things we have need of before we ask. We thank you, Lord God, that even in times like these, you stand ready to meet the need of every desperate soul. And we pray, God, that as we look into your word, for it is the entrance of the word that giveth life. Give us the here time, Savior, that our souls may live. Lift us and encourage us and keep our head above the waves. You didn't say we wouldn't pass through the waters, but when we would, you wouldn't let the rivers overflow us. You didn't say we wouldn't go through the fire, but if we went through the fire, you, you wouldn't let the flame kindle upon us. We thank you, and as we stand before you tonight, we don't come with no hard luck story, we don't come with no complaint, but we thank you for our journey, that things are well as they are. We bless you for blessing us. We honor you and we give your name the glory. Now, Lord, have your way. Speak to every heart in the name of Jesus. For we realize and recognize that we've entered into the day of God. This is your time. And we want you to have your way. And all of God's people said it is so. It is so. Now, before you take your seats, I want you to just... Look at a neighbor, catch a single neighbor by the hand, look him in the face, eyeball to eyeball, contact and tell him, neighbor, live. I command you to live. For God has said in his word, I have provided better things for you. And because of this, I'm moving on and I'm reaching for bigger and better things in my natural and in my spiritual life and knowing God as I do these things that I say have already begun to come to pass now lift up those hands and bless them everybody bless you. We don't want to hold you hostage. Which I'm like the preacher. He said, I don't see a clock, but the deacon looked at him with all of the keys to the church. And he said, yeah, doc, but there's a calendar on the wall. So we don't want to carry you from p.m. to a.m. <laughs> yes, it is a blessing. And I salute this God man. He knows how to take compliments. He knows how. And uh, if what God had carried uh, Bishop James through, amen, and he hasn't gotten the big head, he won't get it now. You see, God's got some people he can trust. Yeah. Some people don't know how to handle success. I've noticed this, that when prophecy comes to people of God, that sometimes God can prophesy through the prophet and it does not mean that everyone that prophesy is a prophet you may have the gift of prophecy and not necessarily be a prophet but uh, when God gives a prophecy and I've noticed that some of us is by prophecy like the little fella in New York at Reverend Skinner's church and he got up and says, we're going to have uh, Fon Deasley Nicholas B.H. Bangu to come. And the little boy looked and said, Goo? He couldn't remember and didn't try to remember the other part of his name, Fon Deasley Nicholas B.H. Bangu. He just said, Goo? And do you not know that's the way some people are by prophecy? You know, sometimes prophecy will come where the Lord will say, yes, and I shall bless thee, and thou shalt be anointed, and I shall use thee, you know. And I shall bring them from the east, the west, the north, and the south. And I shall, and as the prophecy for yea, and, and thou shalt raise the dead. Thou shalt raise the dead. Ooh, we've 
forgot all the other part but just and raise the dead. You forgot Fon Beasley Nicholas. All you could remember is goo. <laughs> Thank God. And you out the cemetery saying, get up, get up. But you see, you've got to realize that prophecy is on condition. That's it, that's it. You know, I've noticed this. And, and, and you see, when an individual don't meet the condition, you don't qualify for the promise. Yeah. You know, the scripture says, now unto him that is able. Oh, I love that scripture. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think. But here's the condition. According to the power that worketh. So if you ain't got nothing working in you. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Amen. The scripture says and uh, the, the scripture tells us uh, uh, all through the scriptures how the scriptures, I, I'll, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive the sin, I'll heal the land. But the condition, humble yourself, pray, seek my face, turn to, you understand. The scripture says you can ask for what you will. He said, but wait, come back here. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. So I find that as we get down the road of peace, it isn't that God don't mean what he says, but uh, there's a condition that we have got to meet. And then I'm glad for prophecies because some of you have prophecies that God has given and have told you that haven't come to pass. And would you believe me if I told you I'm glad that everything that God has told me haven't come to pass and I'm glad some of the prophecies that have, God has given for me as far as other people are concerned haven't come to pass. Because this lets me know I got some more time down here. You've got a lot of folks rushing. Yes, God, you said that I would, you said that I would travel abroad and you push in to travel abroad. Yes, and you said, Lord, that thus and so, and I would do this and I would do that. And Lord, I'm happy because every, everything God has told me, Elder Hinton has come to pass. Well, it's about time for you to leave then because all the prophecies has been fulfilled. <laughs> I'm not in no hurry. The Lord told me one more move. And I found myself just pushing, just pushing, trying to get in that church. Just pushing. I just had another birthday. Just pushing. And you know how you do when you get 39. You start hitting brakes. You start hitting brakes, you know. But, and I found out, I says, I'm not in no hurry to get to that last move. That last move, because God said one more move. And I know it won't be in no other move after that. But I haven't made that move yet. <laughs> Take your time, Lord. Amen. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful. God bless these men of God that's here and each and every one of you. We have a couple of, a few of our albums that we'd love to share with you out there in the lobby if you care to uh, get them after service. Just a very, a very few. One is Set Thy House in Order. Set Thy House in Order. And it has three cassettes to it, marriage, family, and the home. Number two, relationship between family members. And also husband and wife relationship. When I got to talk about the home, I thought of the wife. Lord, it, it stand so then you got to stand because I got to sleep tonight with you. And oh God, she says, you know, you never. But this is my wife. Oh, I went years alone, and God saw it wasn't good for man to be alone. And anything God see is not good is no good. Always remember that. Amen. And I'm glad that God saw it wasn't good for man to be alone. And the Lord blessed her. She came and joined my church, and I liked what I saw. And I felt something in here, and I was rebuking the devil, devil, you are lying. Yeah. Because the, you, you, the female members ought to be your mother and sisters only. And I couldn't get my eyes off of her. And I didn't want her to know I was looking at her. Amen. I talked to Bob Harris. I said, there's a young lady in our church, man, listen, right in here. And the more I rebuke it, the deeper it gets. And I know it ain't nothing but the devil because I'm old enough to be her daddy. 
ain't no I ain't no I ain't trying to fix nothing that I'm old enough to be a daddy. Yes, now some of y'all looking funny. <laughs> when I don't this make sense, it don't make sense for both of us to smell like liniment. <laughs> and so he said, pray about it, preacher. For all you know, it just may be the Lord. I said, well, I'm a that Cleveland was running the meeting and I didn't go out of my way, you know, because I'm not a flirtatious person, never been a flirtatious person, you know. And I was wondering how could I get to her, you know. And as the Lord would have it, her mother was ill and she wrote a note said, Preacher, can you pray for my mother? She had cancer. And uh, if you could pray for her, I would appreciate it. She came to me, you know, the chair, my chair was like on the side. And I said, yes, I would be glad. Give me your address. I would be glad to go because I'm a minister. I'm to pray for the sick. And I'm to concern myself with members of the church. Give me that address. Elder Cleveland and I went the next day. I was glad to pray for her mother. And I took my time to pray. And when I got through praying, I had to, naturally, I had to give the daughter some instructions how to believe God. Then naturally, I had to call back to find out through the daughter how the mother was, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Don't the Lord know how to fix things, y'all? Yeah. Amen. Well, that's Sister Carolyn Hinton. So anyway, those of you that are desirous of this, set thy house in order. And then we also have another tape. I wouldn't go to hell if I were you. I wouldn't go to hell if I were you. Don't let your flesh carry you to hell. And two resurrections, two judgments in two books. Every one of us is in one of those resurrections, one of the judgments and one of the books. Then we have given over but not given up. Given over but not given up. Alcoholism, drugs, sex, and music, and great spirits of depression. Amen. Then we also wrote a book, Christian Warfare. I recommend this book. You see, Satan has been defeated but he has not been destroyed. There's a difference. He's been defeated. He defeated, even death has been defeated, but death has not been destroyed. See, death has been defeated for the Christian, for the believer. All death is to the Christian is James. speak of a day Jesus when he spoke of a day he spoke of a 12 hour period on one occasion are there not 12 hours in a day and then creation when he spoke of a day it was a 24 hour period and the evening and the morning was the first day if you notice we all deal with day we don't too much deal with night we don't say well when is my furniture coming give us five more sleeping nights uh uh working days Hmm? Not sleeping nights, but working days. I haven't heard nobody say uh, that this is my birth night, but I've heard them say it's my birth day. So day is not only a 12-hour period as far as daylight, but it's a 24-hour period. And then when the Bible speaks of day, it also speaks of a, a, an era or a dispensation or a period. This is the day, this is the period, this is the era, this is the dispensation that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in. Now the reason why God is going to bless in this day, and there are many of you, that, the, the, in fact the majority of you that's here tonight, most likely will be here during the year 2000. And after the year 2000, come December 31st, one minute after 12, we'll be moving toward the 21st century. And I'm going to tell you what God is doing. God is preparing his people for the 21st century. Yeah. These are the days we're not going to stand and spend a half an hour getting one demon out of one person. We've got to have the goods. Are you listening? God will not allow the devil to outdo him. 
These are the days when God is moving his people, his church, into another realm, a higher realm of spirit and anointing where we don't have to hit and miss and guess. Now, you know, it don't make sense for the world. You call the psychic line and they're hitting the nail right on the head. Call the psychic line, say yes. What is your name? Thalma. Say it again, Thalma. One more time, Thalma. Yes, I see things changing, Thalma. Around the latter part of November. Who is this redhead fella that's tall? Yes, well that's a friend of mine. We, we, we're just friends. Don't let him go. He's gonna be the instrument of bringing you into your career and help you write that book. Who is Je Je Jane? Jo George? Yes, yeah, his name is George, George. Yes. The man is not saved. The girl is not sanctified. She's not filled with the Holy Ghost. That was the burning fire. Don't speak in tongues. Does the Spirit give, me, give him utterance? Hmm? Now, they're not, pre they're not giving you truths. They're giving you facts. But it don't make sense for us to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. That was the burning fire. Ha, na, na, edi, bo, ride my Honda. And hidden and missing. Hitting and missing. Say, your leg is hurting, is that right? No, my leg don't hurt at all. Excuse me, I'm just feeling my way. No, 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 we don't need to hit and miss, folks. We need to hit the nail on the head. And that's why God is going to bring the church to another. See, people think that God is going to just stop all the gangs. He's going to stop all the wars, Reverend Henderson. He's going to, oh, he going to stop all this and make the world like the millennium, period. No, no, no. God said, no, while all of this stuff is going on, I'm going to move by my power. The scripture says, for this cause have I raised Pharaoh, Pharaoh, and Pharaoh wasn't a good guy. I raised Pharaoh up for what? That my power may be shown. In other words, in other words every time you tell Pharaoh to let the people go, Moses, I'm going to harden his heart. For what, Lord? So I can work a miracle of judgment. And I'm here to tell you, hey, the stage is being set. In the midst of all of this that's going on, children gang members, children drug addicts, and some of you shouting and tap dancing, your son is in the gang and don't know it. Can a gun on the hip and I don't even know it. My daughter's slipping out at night and I don't even know it while I'm praying, crying out to God. My daughter, listen, I'm here to tell you, God is going to turn this thing around. And he will not allow the devil to outdo him or his people. Listen, you couldn't find no better time to be living than you're living now. This is the best time to be alive. The best time? Yes. Because you were born for this time. I don't care how you got here. I do care how you got here. But whether you're legit or illegit, you're here. And God is not going to hold you in account because you're illegitimate. Your parents wasn't married. You didn't have nothing to do with that. They came here on, they came here on, you came here on their pleasure and God is not going to stop his will from being done in your life. And he would have me to tell you, listen, so what? All right, Elton, I was an orphan, so? My mother left me, so? My dad disowned me, so? What are we going to do about it? I tell you what let's do, let's go on with your life. God has a purpose for you being here for this time. God has a purpose for your life. And what you want to do is go on with your purpose. Go ahead on with your purpose and stop looking for pity. You got the world, well, he didn't killed up half a dozen folks. Well, he didn't have a father. Hey, there's a whole lot of folk didn't have a father and didn't kill up a whole lot of folk but they're going on with their lives. Say amen. <clears throat> and these are the days, these are the days, hallelujah, when God is getting ready to move like never before. 
God is not going to allow the enemy to shoot at us with heavy artillery and give us in return spitball bean blowers and BB guns to, to hurl at the devil. Uh-uh. Where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. There's some of you that sit in here, your life is getting ready to take a change. Your life is getting ready to take a change, not for the worse, but for the better. Because in the last three to four years, you've been going through, literally speaking, hell kitchen. Literally speaking, you've been suffering the torches of the damned. And hell hounds have been barking, and hell is trying to puke upon you. And you've been made to wonder, God, why? God, why me? And God said, why not you? And this is why some of you, the Lord didn't let you get by with this much. Some folks did everything under the sun and you said, I don't see how they could do that. I would be afraid God strike me dead. Any are called, but few are chosen. Maybe you're one of the chosen children of destiny. Say amen. Or in the book of Joel, in the book of Joel, the first chapter, the third, beginning at the third verse, tell ye children of it, and let your children tell their children and their children another generation that which the palmer worm has left have the locusts eaten and that which the locusts have left the canker worm eaten that which the canker worm has left the caterpillar has eaten and then in the book of Joel the second chapter it tells us I will restore unto you the years that the locust has eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. My army, which, is, which I sent, is great. When you look at the one next to you, look them in the face. If they don't look at you, just look upside their head and tell them, neighbor, it's restoration time. It's restoration time. In other words, God is, God is restoring. So many people are trying to tell folks what God is not doing. Well, I'm here to tell you what God is doing. God is restoring. Amen. He's restoring you from that relapse and that restoring you, amen, from the enemy. That, that the canker worm and the enemy. It's restoration time where God is giving back to his people power. Now, if you will notice, check this out. If you will notice, a few years ago, in fact, it still lingers somewhat, where the message came very strong, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. And we grabbed the first two prosperities and ran haywire. But remember, the first two prosperity pivots on the hinges of the last. I want you to prosper materially, be in health physically, even as, as, as your soul prosper spiritually. So if you notice, check it out, a few years ago, folks was going after spiritual things. A closer walk. I'm going, El I want a deeper depth. You know, El I want to refill the whole goal. Now, uh, what you want, baby? I want God to stir my gift spiritual. And what you want? Uh, you know, uh, I, I was fooling around here and I lost my anointing. I want a, a, a heavy anointing in that. Now, all right, good. And what about you? Elhin, I am spoken tongues since the war. I want to speak in tongues. All right. Everything was spiritual. Everything was spiritual. When we go to the big tents, the big tops, it was spiritual. Lord, help us today. Lord, let your anointing. Oh, Jesus, use me. Oh, everything was spiritual. Until after a while, the devil shifted our faith. Then you begin to hear, what did the Lord do for you? Well, I got a two cars. Great. Uh-huh. Nothing wrong with that. And what about you? Well, I, <laughs> the husband died. We wasn't together, but we wasn't divorced. It. And he had two, three flat buildings. So when he died, it fell in my lap. Hey, it fell in my lap, you hear? Mm. Thank you, Jesus. All right, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But then the folk that was reaching for spiritual things, a closer walk, a deeper depth. 
Oh, hi, hi, hi. So they start reaching and moving their faith into the natural. Hey, we're not knocking that, but I'm going to show you something. You see, the devil can bless you to bind you. He showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and said, they're mine, and I give them whomsoever I will. But the condition is if you fall down and worship me. All right? Now, so you've got people testifying of good material things. Now, understand me, I'm not knocking it, but we got to balance it, you know what I mean? Because, see, people are just, oh, we got rings on every finger looking like brass knuckles, honey. Honey, we got gold and chains and glory and dimes and, oh, thank you, Jesus. God is blessed, man. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. Some of us never had as much gold as we got now. We thought when we had a little gold in our mouth, that was it. But, honey, we got gold. Oh, don't you tell me God ain't blessing me. That's good. Nothing wrong with that. But now, you see, the devil is spirit. And he'll load you with material stuff. Because you can't fight him with a car. You can't fight him with a six flat building, income property. You can't, you can't fight it. Devil, leave me alone. I throw this house at you. You can't do that. You see what I'm saying? We got more than we ever had and can't even get the devil a mosquito off our neck. God built you, Satan. Did you hear me? I said, built you. Built you, built you, built you. Do you follow me? So here's what's happening. I'm going to tell you exactly where we are tonight. Now understand me. I'm not knocking you for that. Uh-uh. Because I, I was on the bandwagon too. But then here's what has happened. When Melody was born... The church just gave everything. Rabbits and teddy bears and dolls and stuff. So, you know, and the mother's just like Sarah. You, do, you, you did good to see her, let alone touch Melody. And she had one of those gadget PA system like where she could be in the kitchen. You know, in case the baby's strangling. <laughs> you know how she was. And we put in the playpen. I said, she'll be in here a while because she got all this stuff in the playpen. We don't have to worry about nothing. And Lord, she wasn't in that two minutes. She wasn't even walking. She hadn't started crawling. She stood up on the playpen, and do you know that girl had tears coming down her eyes? And she, she said, dad, 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 dad. I understand they say dad, dad for mama. Well, mama, you can't have everything. Daddy got to have huh. So she was saying, Dad, Dad, and she was reaching up, and I got a revelation. God gave me a revelation just that quick. He said, now you see that? Out of everything that's in that playpen, materially, she wants her daddy. And the Lord began to show me, this is where my people have gotten. Some of us, even after we left slavery, never had nothing. You know what I mean? Never had nothing. God wants us to have that best. God wants to. <clears throat> and he began to bless us materially and everything. And ooh, I don't care what you see. You are spirit. God don't save the flesh. He saves your spirit. When you're born again, you're born of the. When you feel with the Holy Ghost, it's your spirit. Uh huh. And God don't talk to your flesh. It's, your, it's, it, it's God that talks to your spirit. And your spirit tells your flesh, you're going to fast today whether you like it or not. You know what I mean? Your spirit tells your flesh, you're going to pray, you can yawn all you want. But when you get through yawning, we're going to get some praying tonight. It's your spirit that controls. That's why the flesh warp against the spirit and spirit warp against the flesh. All right? And the Lord began to show me, he said, Richard, you see that? Out of all that material stuff that's in that pen, she wants her daddy. And he said, that's just where the people of God has begun to come to now. We had a little recess. And just, oh my God, with our hats and, ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. A great big hat with a long feather going first to the left, then to the right, and then forward. <laughs> Honey, we just, don't tell me I ain't blessed. 
I mean, what you're talking about? We've been, what you talking about, honey? The Lord is blessing men. And, 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 and knowing good and well, your eyebrow wasn't itching, but you had that big carrot diamond that you wanted to sparkle. <clears throat> and as I was saying, beloved, <laughs> huh? But then you're a spirit. And you found out in spite of all of them beautiful cars on the lot, in spite of, dog, my shoes, I never get a shoe under $1,200. You found out that don't mean nothing when it come down to the hunger that's in your spirit for God. I don't care how he bless you materially, it don't take the place of worship. It don't take the place of fellowship. It does not take the place of that relationship with God. Hallelujah. David found out it didn't mean nothing to be a king. He said, Lord, don't you cast me away from your presence. Don't take your spirit from me. You can have my crown. You can have my royal diadem. You can take this scepter that's in my hand. You can take my throne. You can have my money. You can have my clothes. You can have my car. But whatever you do, don't take your spirit. Hallelujah. Don't take your spirit from me. Hallelujah. And brother, I'm like David. Hey, you welcome God to anything I got because I didn't bring nothing here no how. And I can't carry nothing out. Say amen. So God is restoring and giving back what the enemy has stolen from the spiritual standpoint. Now, you know, we've got better looking churches now over the country than we've ever had. We've got no better looking churches. Amen. Better programs. Oh, honey, just a one-stop station. Everything just... And many of us have the form, but deny the power. And I'm going to tell, tell you something, folks. I don't care how big a church is. Don't you judge your relationship and your status with God by a big TV church that you see on TV. Because you see, some of us, he, he got, some of us have gotten so big we don't want to worship no more. We don't want to praise God no more. Huh? We just want to, hallelujah, and that slipped out. You know, glory, you, you know, but hey, don't you ever, as long as you live, forget where God brought you from. Huh? And didn't nobody ever tell you that dancing was out. David, a king, the Bible said he leaped and he danced. And his wife looked at him and said, I saw you out there showing off. You a king. You ain't supposed to carry out like that. You're dancing your clothes off. It's embarrassing. He said, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. The Ark of the Covenant had left Israel. And I've been praying and my knees have been weak through fasting. The dogs were looking at me barking. I become just a shadow. And here God has sent the Ark of the Covenant, which, which was to them what the Holy Ghost is to us. My God, he leaped all over the place and danced before the Lord with all his might. Now his wife didn't care for it. But you know what happened? Her wound was cursed. When you look at folks looking at oh, all that flesh just fanning around here, Sit down. You better be careful that God don't curse you. Well, you won't be able to produce. And I don't mean just naturally produce, but spiritually. Are you listening to me? When you see folks rejoicing, you don't know what they're rejoicing about. Some folks don't have nothing but a bed and a chair and a lamp in their bedroom. And when they come to a service and want to enjoy God and lift up their hands and worship God and praise God in the beauty of holiness and you look down your little nose with disdain at them, brother, you don't know like they know what God have done for them no more than I know like you know what God have done for you. Say amen. When you think of where God brought you from, and you know, some of us are so quick to forget where we come from. Butcher knife toting fanny. Pistol packing. I was surprised when I found out, when I looked and saw, I said, you know, the scripture is really rich. That if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Mother Hughes, which is the mother of our church, she got up and testified. 
said, for the Lord saved me, Elder Hinton, I carried a gun on my hips and did nobody mess with me. I also had a switchblade. Amen. I, I, listen, some of you sitting here looking just at Pentecostal lies, just as sanctified as you know how to be, but hey, you remember when. I tell folks, I tell folks in the church, let saints alone. But they're saints. I know, but they weren't always saints. You don't know what folks God saved them from. Because you got some church folks, I don't know what makes them think they can do it, but you got some church folks that, that think they can whoop a fit on you and get back to God before heaven get the news. I don't know. <laughs> And sometimes they want to take advantage of you because you're saved and just pushing you. You're saved. You're supposed to be sanctified. You're supposed to take what they do and just take and just rubbing you. <laughs> That's bad as Brother Lattimore, Keithy's husband, a uh, father. You know, men worked hard. They didn't. See, they didn't have. You know, places help spots and exercise and then on the machine and jogging the type of work you did that was your exercise and he was very short and stocky but masculine and he had just got shaved and they were ridiculing him the man was in the wagon horse wagon he said hey Lattimore I understand you guys say brother Lattimore can you do the sanctify don't do that and, and when he would get upset he would do these numbers he said, now, nah, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't, just don't, don't mock. Don't mock God. <laughs> don't mock God. The man kept on, he reached up and pulled him down from the wagon. Beat the man up and sit him back on the wagon and hunched his shoulder and said, the Holy Ghost will kill you. Are you listening to me? Now, now I... I can't say that was the Holy Ghost, but the point I'm stressing is this. Leave saints alone. They're trying to be saved. They want to be nice. They're trying to love you now. Don't, don't push them. <laughs> Poking fun out of them and everything. You, you know what I mean? Thank God. God is restoring. God is giving back. And I'm glad to be living in this day. You're blessed to be able to come out on the wheel of time for such a time as this. You know why you're blessed to be born now, to be here now? Because if you was born 150 years ago, you wouldn't be here. And if you were here, you'd be so old, you wouldn't even know you're here. But thank God you came out on the wheel of time for such a time as this. And you see, when, you, when you've seen the power of God, when you have seen the power of God before, you're not satisfied. With, with, some, with what some of the folks are getting now. Ooh, because that's all they know. But if you were way over here and saw what God did in the days of yesteryear and then come over here and see what's happening now among Christendom, you can differentiate between the two. Now, if you just got saved a few years, you don't know about back there. Do you follow me? All you know is about now. But when you know back there, something in you refused to be satisfied. Something in you is saying, Lord, restore. Revive us again. I hear some of the ministers today. What do you mean? What do you mean revival? What do you mean revival? Means to bring, and do you not know revival is not for sinners. Revival is for the saints. For the word revive means to bring something back to life that was once alive. A sinner has never been alive. He's dead and trespasses in sin. He needs salvation. <clears throat> Do you understand? And so God wants to restore, which means to give back. Restore means to return, to bring back into existence or use. It means to renew. It means to rebuild. It means to alter or change back to the former position or condition. It means to reclaim back 
unto original form. Hallelujah. And that's what it's all about. I'm convinced that what we need to do is let names and handles and titles and everything rest a while and just get the more of God. These folks are so hung up on names and titles and DDQs and LSDs and and, and, and oh my God, until the, even in biblical times, and I, Paul, and I, Peter, and I, John. But here we've got to have all these times and we'll kill folks about positions. This is not what it's about now because it's going to take the power of God now in times like these. We're dealing with the this kind. You remember the disciples couldn't do a thing with that demon? Can you imagine 12 Rovers preachers standing over one little boy? Come out of him, and I mean come out right now. I dare you if you don't. You, you, you coming. Oh, you coming out. Oh, blah, 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 blah. And the boy is getting wash. So the man encouraged him. He said, thank you. My boy does look some better. Thank you. And I can see Peter standing there. Well, if you, if you have any more trouble, you bring him on. But the man saw Jesus coming. And he said, Lord, if you can, I believe, help thou my unbelief. The, the devil all times throw him in the fire. All time. Well, when Jesus delivered the boy, the disciples didn't say nothing. They waited until the meeting was over. He said, Jesus, we have never been so embarrassed in all our life. All 12 of us standing over that little boy, just hollering all in his ear and everything. And I ain't lying. The boy didn't get best, get, didn't get better, Lord. You know, and, and I know the daddy just said that to keep us from feeling bad. But Lord, here's what we want to know. Why couldn't we cast it? Now look, we didn't ask. You said follow you and you would make us to become features of men. Right, right. Well, why couldn't we cast the devil? You know, Jesus said this kind. Let me hear you say this kind. We've come to the this kind. We have come to the this kind in our children. We've come to the this kind in our community. We've come to this kind in America. This kind. Now the very fact he said this kind gives you to know that there are different ranks of demons. Yeah? See? You got them little private first class demons where you say, Dude! and he runs only to get his big brother. And his big brother comes with whiskers on. Ugly, fuzzy, bumpy back demons. Said that I hear some loose around here. Y yeah, praise the Lord. Praise the Listen, folks, we've come to the this kind. And this is why God is going to release a greater power among his people in order to deal with the this kind. Now, I know how you feel. Oh, Elder Hinton, I just want the Lord to bring back those good old happy days. Those days are not coming back. You know why? You know what made those days like they were? Circumstances. Oh, Elder Hinton, we'd walk one another to the streetcar line because you didn't have no cars. Back there. Oh, I hope we'd give all we had because we didn't have nothing. Back there. Huh? When you looked at a parking lot and saw about 60 cars, you would say, uh, uh, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, that's 360 folks in the church because we sat on one another's lap in cars coming to church. Now it's one car per person. You look out on the lap, oh, the church is packed. How many cars out there? About 300 cars. We get about 300 folks sitting in there. Now, you say, Lord, bring back those happy days. For those days to come back, circumstances has to come back with them. What do you mean, Ellie Hinton? All right, back there you had a number three tub and a washboard and a brick of Big Ben soap back there. Are you listening? Now you said, Lord, bring back those days. You know we loved it one another. It wasn't much to keep you from loving. Do you follow me? See, when we speak of those days, you got to take the circumstances with it. There wasn't no drugs back there. Everybody raised everybody's children. You go home, boy. Your neighbor would whip you. The school teacher would whip you. The Sunday school teacher would get you. Then your mother would get you, and he bet, and she bet not tell your daddy. Do you follow me? 
See, circumstances was different back there. And you got to take the bitter with the sweet in order. Oh, we used to love everybody. But now to go back there, he's got to put you under that same circumstance. That's why with the circumstances that we're living with today, he's going to have to give us a great amount of love, a greater manifestation of power because circumstances are different. Oh, I'm just about through. Amen. I'll be through before tomorrow morning. <clears throat> We need a restoration of the fear of God. Now there are two types of fear. There's a satanic fear. There's a boogerman, spooky fear. But then there is the godly fear, which is the reverence. I think, listen, I don't care how much people, honey, he's my father, and Jesus is my elder brother, and I can just go and sit in God's lap because he's my father and I just tell him the way I feel. That, uh, uh, well, now, wait a minute, that's true. He's your father. But wait a minute now, he's your father, but you, you fear him. Well, he's a God of love. That's right, but he's a God of consuming fire too. Amen. Don't get so common with God like I'm telling people, talking how the Lord talk. I, I, I don't know. You, you can't make me believe God talks the way he talks to some folks. And the Lord spoke to me and told me to go. I said to God, I can't go. The Lord said to me, you better go. And if I don't, what you going to do? No, baby, no, baby, don't do that. God is not like that. Mm -mm, God don't talk to nobody like that. No, sir, why is it you going to be so powerful and give God word for word when Ezekiel went out under the power and, 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 and Habakkuk said when I heard God speak my lips quivered my belly trembled and rotten entered into my bones John when he heard God he said I fell as a dead man huh? when John heard God who shall I sin and who will go for us and John and I, I was told my woe is me and here you gonna stand up honey I've been talking to God all this morning. We talk, oh, we talk about three hours. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. No, if God talked to you like that, you wouldn't be on your feet. You'd be somewhere crawling around the bedroom. You'd be somewhere, oh my God, anointed and half out of it and crying and, and, and half of you wouldn't even be there if God really talked like we say he talked. He's a great God and he's a powerful God. And we must fear him. We must reverence him. We also need a restoration of holiness. We need a restoration of holiness because holiness is not a denomination. People have tried to make a holiness out of, a, a denomination out of holiness. Holiness is not a denomination. Holiness is a lifestyle. Holiness is the nature of God. Holiness is God's genuine nature that has been implanted in those who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. All right? You're black. Your husband black. And you bring forth a black child. You're Caucasian. Your husband is Caucasian. You bring forth Caucasian children. You're Oriental. And your husband's Oriental. So you're to bring Oriental children then if God is holy, why can't he have holy children? Hmm? Now there's no need in Sister to hitting coming with a, a, a child with slant eyes, straight hair, cold black, slant eyes. Ching, ching, ching. No, ain't no way you're going to tell me this game. Well, you know what happened to Mary, but baby, you ain't Mary. Well, see, baby, see, sometimes uh, the genes go, no, they don't go that far back. Now, come on, talk, come back here. Do you follow me? If God is a holy God, he wants holy children. Your children can't act but look like you or, 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 or act like you because they have your genes in them. That's why sometimes they'll look at the white. Your wife and say, if your wife's if your wife's maiden name was Culpepper, but since she's married, she's Roundtree. All right. They'll look at your child and say, honey, that's a Culpepper. 
meaning this you have taken after the people on your on your mother's side when they say that's a round tree oh honey they done took after people on the daddy's side but it's still within the confines of the marriage do you understand when you save and you're born again you're not supposed to act like a devil's child you're supposed to act like God's child because holiness is a lifestyle it's God's genuine nature that has been planted in those who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit huh? it's not an outward show it's an inward practice you don't just look it active but you be it be ye holy for I'm holy you say, well, and then, and then we need a revival, restoration of sanctification. Because, see, sanctification is not a denomination either. It's what God inquire, requires out of anybody that intends to see God. Well, I'm Baptist. Well, you need to be a sanctified Baptist, that's all. You understand? And, and listen, don't this make sense? First natural and then spiritual. Every one of us in here believe in sanctification. Yes, you do. You don't put the clean clothes with the dirty clothes. But why are they your clothes? But they ain't clean, Reverend. But why do you put the clean clothes? Down in the basement by the washing machine. Where your clothes that you've washed and clean and ironed, where do you put them? In the trowel. Why? Because they're sanctified. They're set apart to be used. Yeah? You don't take dirty dishes and put them on the shelf. You leave them in the sink. You boil and scald them and put them in the, in the dishwasher there, huh? And then when they're clean, even if you don't put them on the shelf, if you scald them and leave them on the drain, let them drain dry, they're still sanctified. They've been set apart. Even though you used that plate two days ago with spaghetti and left it in the sink, you still don't pick it up. Well, it's my plate. You got to eat that before you die. No, you don't do that. What you do is you clean that plate. You scald it and clean it. It's got to be sanctified. Huh? You believe in natural sanctification? I'm not talking about denomination now. Huh? You believe in natural sanctification? Oh, we're going to wear our suits. You're going to wear your dresses a few times before you send them to the cleaners. But don't tell me every time you come out of the shower, you're going to put the same undergarments on. Why? They're yours. But Reverend, don't be crazy. They ain't clean. There's your answer. Do you understand me? We believe were carried over spiritually. God says he just wants you to be clean. And you know it feels good to be clean. Have you ever noticed when you wash your car, carry your car to the car wash, look like it rides better. It's a psychological thing. It rides better. Well, that's the way it is when you're clean. It's just nice to be clean in your mind, clean in your thoughts, and just the thoughts of the righteous is right, clean in your spirit, and woo, to know you can look at everybody straight from the shoulder, clean, clean, clean. That's sanctification. And he requires that out of anybody that intend to make it. Well, what am I in sanctified, El Hinton? Well, um, the scripture tells us about you. But according to the scripture, we need a restoration of holiness. A rest and, and if you notice, you don't hardly hear that word in many of leading churches now. You don't hear it. Tell you something else. You know what you don't hardly hear now in many of the leading churches on television? Heaven. It's become a pie in the sky now. And God knows you don't hear hell. You don't even hear hell. They don't preach it no more. That don't make it right. They did not preach heaven no more. You all that want a pie in the sky. Always talking about heaven. And if you notice, those were the majority of our songs. I dreamed I went to the city called glory. So bright and so fair. <laughs> When I enter the gates, I cry glory. The angels all met me there. They carried me from mansion to mansion. And all the sights I saw. But I said, I want to see Jesus. Jesus, the man who died for all. And when the saints go marching in, it's a highway to heaven. Move on up a little higher. 
You know what I mean? Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away. They don't sing those songs now. Some of them don't even want to sing them at the funerals. They don't hardly even want to sing blood songs now. They took blood songs years ago out of the hymnal, but then the reason why the devil did that because he knew the power that was in the blood. See? Huh? See, God is bringing all this stuff back. That, the blood songs was taken out of the hymnal by the World Council of Churches. Are you listening to me? But the folk just kept singing. I know the blood prevails. The blood prevails. Just like in olden days, no matter what the devil says, the blood prevails. The blood prevails. I know the blood prevails. He's bringing it all back. See, the devil knows that the blood is one of the weapons that we can use against the devil. No, now, don't this make sense? If the blood of Cain was powerful enough, human blood, to cry out from the ground after Cain had buried him, and Abel's blood was crying out from the ground, vengeance against Cain, and if the blood of an animal, which was a lamb, was powerful enough to keep the death angel from coming into the home of the Israelites because the blood was for the household, how much more powerful is the blood of Jesus? Say amen. So brother, brother, sometimes you, there are many weapons that the devil in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Devil in the name of Jesus. You're saying the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, according to the word of God, and putting the word of God on him, putting faith on him, putting the blood, putting the name, one of them got to get him. Oh, one of them's got to get him. Am I right? Thank God. Let me close here. So not only do we need a restoration of holiness and the fear of God and sanctification, but we need a restoration that will open our eyes. And when I say open our eyes, I'm speaking spiritually. We need spiritual insight, foresight, and present sight. When I say open our eyes, these are the days that we are to see like God. What do you mean see like God? I don't mean see everything that God sees. That could never be. But we're to see like God to this extent. If God shows you something by revelation, then he has opened your eyes and let you see that thing like him. Because you didn't get it from a dictionary, an almanac, or an encyclopedia, but it came by revelation. Huh? So you see, like God. Then there's some things he don't show you spiritually, but he bites in your spirit. There's some things that just come by revelation. But you see, the, the, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirits, they are gifts of revelation. And it's going to come through a dream, vision, revelation or an ultimate voice sometimes you can be just standing by the sink washing and the Lord can speak something to your heart elder Shaw in, in Milwaukee he was in service and this man came to run a meeting who and the man just sounded like he was perfect and as he sat there as a pastor he was just sitting there minding his own business and some said that's not his wife he didn't pay no mind you know, that's not his wife. Just come on. Then it came again. That's not his wife. That's not his wife. That's not his wife. Now, he didn't, he, he didn't go to the library to find that out. He didn't find that out in the dictionary. And that came by revelation. See? And so you find that these are the days when God is going to restore back to the church because, see, when we have the gifts of revelation in the church, you didn't get through it by with nothing. The mothers didn't, they didn't, I got the Holy Ghost and I don't care who don't like it. No, you didn't do that years ago. And I don't care how you flipped and flapped like a chicken with his head cut off or like a fish out of water. If they didn't, and, and, and no, baby, I turned to Lord, call tonight to Lord. Yeah, he blessed you. Yes, bless you. He blessed you, didn't he? They caught you before you even said you were filled. Yeah, you blessed. But you keep coming, he'll fill you. Not everything got the Holy Ghost. 
Everything got the Holy Ghost. My God, everything that don't have it got it. Everything, what you're talking about. But God, give us an eye opener. Give us insight, foresight, present sight. Let us see like God. Let us know like God. Let us speak like God. When you prophesy, you're speaking like God, if God is giving you. And then when you prophesy, you don't make up a prophecy at home. Yay. Thus say all of y'all, yay. I am in that mist. No, that's what all of them say. Yea, behold, it is I. I loved it, you. <laughs> and I, thou art mine. Yea, and I'm going to use you all. Yea, yea. Yea, yea, yea. No, no. Mm -mm. No, no. Prophecy is the mouth of God through the lips of clay. Prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. When the Lord think enough of you to use you to prophesy, you don't sit down when you, he use you and anoint you and your arm around your wife. Yay, the Lord does say to his people tonight, yea, I'm in your midst. Whether you like it or not, I'm here. No, 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 that ain't the way the Lord does. When the Lord speak through you and think enough to look over all these folks and prophesy through you, you stand on your feet in reverence. You do it if the president walk in. You do it if the judge in the courtroom walk in. And the righteous judge has picked over all these folks for you. And when you prophesy, you don't quote scriptures. Yay, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yay, God sent out his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world to him might be saved. Yay, no, yay, nothing. You sit down, baby. We can read those scriptures. Prophecy is the mouth of God. You don't make it up at home. You don't get around over the phone and find out what's going on in a church and get up there and say, yay, what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Folks are having strokes for less than that. Say amen. Oh, listen, I'm here to tell you, folks, God is restoring prophecies back to the church. And the purpose of prophecy is not to bring division. He's restoring gifts to the church. And the purpose of gifts is not to bring division. I must confess, I must confess, when I first started pastoring, I found myself against gifts. And that was only because, only because, many of them were not using the gifts in the right way. Now, what I'm saying will help you tonight. They weren't using the gifts in the right way because, you see, God is not going to show the pastor just everything. And sometimes you have people in the church that's got a little gift that can see. But if you're going to use your gift against the ministry, your time is out there. The purpose of your gift is not to get certain groups. The Lord's been talking to me about you. Oh, you appeared before me, son. What the Lord show you? Mm. Mm. Call me, baby. You know what I mean? And then, God, daughter, you appeared before me in white. Oh, no, no, no. The Lord showed me something about <laughs> so I'm making up my train so that's my spiritual daughter that's my spiritual son baby God's got great things <laughs> so that's my baby there so I got a little group huh and don't you let nobody in this church turn you around don't let these devils over here and I'm pointing you right now don't let these devils in this church drive you they don't mean you know, but God's going to use you anyhow. I know they're sitting on you. I know they're jealous of you. I know they don't mean you no good, son. But the Lord's going to kill Hey! All right, so when they come, hey, when they come in, who they going to sit next to? They going to sit next to her. Bless you, son. <laughs> you know, next week is my birthday. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And I don't care who's up there, including me, the pastor. You know, preaching. My God, preaching is sweating. Pulling off my coat, throwing it, and they just sitting there. And because she don't move, y'all ain't going to move.
Then when somebody else get up there, she pop, and all the rest of them pop. When I do, when they do that, you know what I tell them? Pop, get out of here! Are you listening to me? God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of division. There's one ministry in the church. Basically, there's one pastor. Really, if you want to be technical, there's not really assistant pastor. There is assistant to the pastor. Because the assistant to the pastor follows the ministry like the pastor when he's gone. When you get that fella that comes over the past ain't here, and he does it this way, and I'm going the way the Lord leads me. Watch it. Help me, Holy Ghost. We talking about restoration anyway. <laughs> yeah. So I found myself against gifts. I had a vision that the church, Elihan, was sinking. The church was just sinking. And it was going down. And folks was jumping off and leaving the church. I saw it. Don't get up in front and tell nothing like that. When you got weak folks anyhow, people are like sheep. They'll jump. They want an excuse to jump off. You know what I mean? And I saw them just leaving the church. And you just started the church two weeks ago. Do you understand me? Oh, y'all ain't gonna like me tonight. Huh? We need a restoration of God opening our eyes. Giving us insight, foresight, and present sight. We need a restoration of real salvation. Real salvation as far as the joy of salvation. See, people think, people get happiness mixed up with joy. But joy is a spirit. And see, people think that your husband's got to give you a, a key to a brand new Thunderbird in order for you to have joy. Now that's not joy, that's happiness. Joy is when he don't give you nothing, but you're happy for your salvation. David said, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with a free spirit. Oh, let me close here. So there is an anointing. We need a restoration of the anointing. You have an anointing. Many of you have an anointing, just like God has given every one of you uh, of, of the measure of faith. You have the measure... You have the measure of faith. God has given everyone the, the measure of faith. And that's why these are the days when he's moving through his people with corporate faith and corporate anointing. The day for big shots and four day wonders and going to bed a blunder, waking up a wonder is over. What God is doing as the people begin to worship God, as the people begin to stand in faith, you're going to see more miracles accidentally than you've been trying to see on purpose because it is not by our power, it's not by our might, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. An anointing is an endowment of God's spirit for a special service. When God anoints you, he anoints you for a service. Many people said, Lord, anoint me. Why do the Lord have to anoint you to come late and leave early? You don't need no anointing for that. But the anointing is like Sitco gas. They said Sitco gas is for people that's going places. If you're getting ready to do a work for God, he's got an anointing for you. If you're a street corner preacher, there's an anointing that goes with passing out tracks. There's an anointing that goes with the prison ministry. There's an anointing that goes with hospital ministry. There is anointing that goes with all to work ministry. And I'm here to tell you, God is not going to call you to do a thing and not turn around and anoint you for it. For you see, it is the anointing that lifts burdens and break yokes. It is the anointing that heals, liberates, and open eyes. It is the anointing that does good and will move oppression. For the scripture tells us in Isaiah 10, 27, in that day the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder and the yoke from off of your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Give me about 10 more minutes. And in the book of Luke, the fourth chapter from the 18th to the 20th verse, it was Jesus that said, and basically that's what the ministry is about. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he says he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to preach deliverance to the captives and recover of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. 
when Jesus got through reading the Bible said and he closed the book and gave it to the ministers. Man, that's a revelation. I'm here to tell you, every one of you, that God has called with the holy call. He has given you the book. And the book is a book of good news. It's a book to preach the captives and set them free. The anointing comes and in the book of Acts, the 10th chapter and the 38th verse, it tells us how God anointed Jesus who went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil. And I'm here to tell you, even tonight, before we close out this message, that it's restoration time for you. That some of you are here and you don't know why you're here at this latter rain. But God would have me to tell you, you were summons to be here. God called you and said, no, you didn't make last year, but you're going to make this one. You made last year and you're going to make this one too. Because there's something God wants to do in you, to you, with you, and for you. He called you and summons you to be in this meeting because this is a new day and God is bringing his people to another level. There's a lot of ministries and churches that's represented here and you've gotten sick and tired of the same old, same old and you figure that must be a better way. Even as a minister, you feel, God, I'm preaching all I know and look like I'm making tracks and not getting nowhere. But down in you is longing for a deeper depth and a higher height. Down in you is longing for a richer experience of the Christ. And God would have me to tell you that it's restoration time. He said, now that that's a palmer worm. And the palmer worm is a worm that destroys the crop. The locust is a grasshopper. And do you not know in biblical times they had what was called a 17-year locust. It took him 17 years to reach maturity. And when he would reach the maturity, he would eat everything in his path, including the bark off the tree. And so the locust is like a grasshopper. And he said that that the locusts have left. He said the canker worm. The canker worm is a worm that eats and destroys the buds of the plant. And the caterpillar is a worm that destroys the leaves of the plant. And as some of you, the devil have tried to get the best of you. And you figure, Elder Hinton, ain't nothing left. I don't even have a decent prayer life. The devil have ate up my anointing. My inspiration and demonstration and confirmation is gone. And look like I'm not going to be able to get myself together again. But God told me to tell you it's restoration time. And he's going to give it back to you. And the glory of the latter is going to be greater than the former. I'm just wondering must I preach this thing tonight. The glory of the latter is going to be greater than the former. It's restoration time. Now some folks are not going to ever be helped if you feel you got it all and don't need nothing. But you're like the church of Laodicea because you rich and increase in goods and have need of nothing. Know it thou not that you're wretched, miserable, poor, and blind. But I counsel you to buy me gold tried in the fire. Yes, I've been preaching for going on 48 years but tonight I'm just as hungry as I was the night he filled me with the Holy Ghost I'm just as hungry tonight as I was the night the Lord sanctified me because I realized that that deeper depths the devil had made you feel you've arrived just because you've got a big church and a big house and a big car and two nickels to rub together the devil make you feel you've arrived but I'm I'm here to tell you, Doc, you haven't arrived until you get to glory. You've got to keep pushing. For if you don't carry it to the end, if you don't make this last mile, you're not going to be saved. And so this is what we must do. We must push with everything that's in us and look for that realm that God is trying to bring you to. For you see, Moses, my servant, is dead, which represents an era or a dispensation. Then Joshua, Moses, brought him out of, but Joshua brought him in too. And do you not know when Joshua brought him in, you know what he told Israel? He said, now Moses was a babysitter. He gave you sugar tits. He gave you pacifiers. He gave you rattles. And he counseled you from 
sunrise to sunset. But Joshua said, I'm not a babysitter. When we cross this Jordan, it's going to be war all the way. The Canaanites are waiting. The Habites are waiting. The Jubasites are waiting. The Habites are waiting. The giants are waiting for us. And we're not going to have time licking one another's sores, saying you can make it. When you cross this Jordan, it's going to be war all the way. We're moving to the 21st century. The day is out for cry babies. Talking about give me love. You ought to have it by now. It's time to get over your idiosyncrasy. It's time to get over your little no harm stuff. Say glory, say glory, say glory, oh glory. It's a new day now. I said it's a new day. And you know first natural and then spiritual. As I close, if you notice, for the last three years, maybe for the last three to four years, there's been some things that hit America that haven't hit America in almost 50 years. In, the, in California was the fire. Hundreds of acres, thousands of acres burned from the fire to the mudslide, from the mudslide to the rain. In the Midwest, it was flooding and caskets was floating on top of the water. I'm here in, in, in Florida, it was a tornado. They said over the news today that three tornadoes are lined up together like three people in a parade. Folks are disturbed now, but I'm gonna tell you what's happening. Everything that happens natural, it has a spiritual meaning. Now there was a fire in California and you didn't know where the movie stars live, but the fire smoked them out. First natural and then spiritual. God wants to send a Holy Ghost fire and smoke these folks out from their seal houses. Smoke them out into the opening. Smoke them out to their knees. Then there was another thing that took place. There was a riot that took place about two to three years in California. First natural and then spiritual. Now if you know when a ride took place, well Ellen Hinton, how could you apply that? How could that be applied spiritually? When the riot took place, they burned up Los Angeles. They broke in stores. They lifted televisions. They took furniture. You know why they did it? They felt it was theirs. First natural, and then spiritual. Have you ever noticed when you look over the news and they raid a place and they pick up drugs, you see three things, drugs, weapons, and money. Hmm? A drug bus. Every time there's a drug bus, you see weapons, drugs, and money. When the riot took place, they took what they felt was theirs. But let's turn it around spiritually. Sometimes when the police raid a warehouse, they got televisions, transistors. My God, look at all that stuff they've got. Broken box cars on freight trains and go in the warehouse and put it and sell it. Cars and parts of cars, they sell it but when they make a bust, when they make a raid, they don't tell nobody. And they break in that warehouse and get all their stuff. Well, tonight, that's what we've come to do. I told you it's restoration time. The devil have took your stuff. It's in his warehouse. And no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind a strong man. The devil is standing at the door of the warehouse. He's got your son. He's got your daughter. He's got your joy. He stole your gift. He robbed you of your anointing. But I'm going to tell you where we're going tonight. We're going to the warehouse. Devil, you took it in 91. You took it in 79. You took it in 94. But I had 
this is restoration time and we come to get it back we're coming to get it back upon this rock I'll build my church and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it how many want it back how many want it back don't fool me how many want it back if you want it stand on your feet we're breaking in the devil is not going to give you nothing but a hard way to go you gotta take it back and you can't plead with him you can't say mr devil please i don't mean no harm devil i ain't trying to start nothing and i get along with everybody please you got something in there that belong to me uh -uh, we gonna make a raid we gonna make a raid from the choir stand to the door you took it but we're gonna get it back you took it but we're gonna get it back and i'm gonna tell you something when god gives it back to you the glory of the ladder is greater than the former look at the one next to you and tell them neighbor this is only the beginning this is only the beginning for the bible said eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither have it entered into the hearts of men the thing that god has in store for them that love him i came to tell you it's a brand new day thou shalt not remember the former things don't even consider the things of old forget those things which are behind you forget the failures forget the past forget the thing that stain and reach forth reach forth i want you to take that hand and shake it at the devil and tell that devil devil not tomorrow not next week not next month not next year but tonight is restoration night and i'm coming to your warehouse and get back my stuff you taking your hands off of my daughter you're taking your hands off of my daddy you're taking your hands off of my mother you're taking your hands off of my finance off of my house i'm coming to get it back for this is the day that the lord has made and i i i, I i'm gonna rejoice and be glad in it can you say glory can you say glory say glory yeah. three people's hands and tell them neighbor I may not know you but God would have me to tell you this is your time your time has come hallelujah 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 you're looking you've been smiling through tear-stained eyes you've been smiling but your heart's been crying but god told me to tell you a change is coming a change is getting ready to take place your life is getting ready to take a change shout glory shout glory shout glory
You never will know. You're going to do like Samson. You're going to shake yourself. In the 52nd chapter of Isaiah, he said, the first verse, Awake, wake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. Shake yourself from the dust. Shake yourself from the dust. Say, I must have had a fall. Shake yourself.
circulate, operate, percolate, negotiate as never before. The nine supernatural gifts, the nine spiritual gifts, the five ministerial gifts, they're going to be operating. He's not going to capture a Mickey Mouse church. He's not going to rapture a real queen church. A little dab will do you. But he's going to rapture an anointed, spirit feel, tongue speaking, foot patting, hand slapping, gully washing, spirit feel church. Can you say glory? Can you say glory? Say glory! Tonight, before we leave, relinquish our stand. It is he that worketh in us both the will and the do. He puts the will in you. And he turns around and gives you the do. I say this in prophecy. And the Bible didn't say to prophesy that you had to say yay. There's some of you in the last three to four years. You went through things that you didn't bargain for. And I'm a witness. Sickness, pains, and the soul grow by series of crises. And some of you reach the state of emergency. You reach the state of emergency. And you said, Lord, why me? And the Lord said, why not you? Even since you, I've seen you last, I had a hiatus hernia. And Bishop, I was not able to sleep in the bed for three years. I had to sit up in an easy chair. And the digestive juices of the stomach would come up through the esophagus. And sometimes it would get all in my ears, all in my eye, behind my eyeballs, and would burn. And my throat was becoming cancerous. I didn't say I had cancer at the throat. It was becoming cancerous because the juices that breaks up your food, acid juices is strong. Your esophagus is tender. And when I would lay down, it would come up in my throat. And I had to cancel out some appointments because I was... <laughs> and I said, Lord, what is this? For three years, I went and got a checkup. The man showed me, said, yeah, see, look at that. See, that, 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 there it is right there. God was dealing with me in another level higher level of deliverance and that's why you got to be careful I don't I don't knock people that go to the doctors I'm not condemning that or nothing because see you don't know how you're gonna wind up but I went to get the checkup I said Lord I got the checkup but I'm satisfied with it and I said Lord it isn't that I'm not going to ever go to the doctor anymore in my life I said but along through now I got you got to give me a miracle I said, because if I go to the doctor long through now with the way you're dealing with me in deliverance and in miracles, I know me, it would do something to my faith. And I said, God, I'm not knocking no others for going. You know, I said, but along through now, I need that miracle. Now you picture that big king-sized bed, the girl just sleeping, and sometimes Melody jumping to bed with her. And I'm sitting in that easy chair. And see, when you're sitting in the easy chair, just enough to keep your, the, the gravitation, keeping things down. Even if I didn't eat, it was the same way. And then if I tried to turn over, it would throw my back out. Before I could get over that good, 
I was coming out of the culture center, my culture center, and it was in the winter time. And the ground was wet. Well, you know, when the ground is ice, you see it's kind of grayish looking. The ground looked wet. And I was walking and both feet come out from under me and I hit that concrete so hard. If I hit my head, I'd have been in the cemetery. I fell just that hard. But the back of my arms caught me, but it jarred me. Then I noticed a little tingling. I didn't pay it too much mind. You know, young kids, they fall down and jump up and say, ha, ha, I didn't hurt when you get down the road of peace, you lays there. And you don't even want nobody to help you. Say, can I, wait, let me see what's there and what isn't there. But it happened not to be nobody there. So I just got up and got on in my van. And oh my God, as the old folks say, untold misery. And that sciatic nerve, that, that, and I had ruptured the third or the fourth vertebrae. The fourth vertebrae of the. I, I've been under Bishop James since he's been pastoring St. James for about 40 years. Bishop is a great man. He will hold a ghost field and fire baptized. He, he's wonderful, beautiful. He the greatest to me in the city of Toledo. I wouldn't be under nobody else but Bishop, not as long as I live. He's my hero. We have